What's going on guys? Big Jer here with Warp Academy. Today, I wanna to talk about Isotopes Vocal Synth 2. This is an amazing plugin that I've been having a lot of fun with. I'm gonna show you guys how to take vocals and do things like this with them. And also this. And we're gonna go ahead and make a lead out of a vocal that sounds like this. Dude, this is gonna be fun. Let's get into it. All right, today we're talking about Isotope's Vocal Synth 2, and we're gonna be going into my favorite top three features. I've been using it for about a week, so the three things that I love right away about this. So first, like, what is Vocal Synth 2, right? This isn't gonna be a full-on explanation of every feature in Vocal Synth 2. Rather, we're gonna talk about what it is, we're gonna quickly go through the GUI so you feel comfortable using it, then talk about my favorite three things. And we're gonna be going into MIDI mode, talking about how we can enhance backing vocals and also using MIDI mode to create leads out of vocals. And then we're gonna go into sidechain mode and talk about what we could do to our vocals with sidechaining. All right, let's get into it. Vocal Synth 2 is definitely a unique vocal processing unit. Vocal Synth 2 is described to be an immersive vocal experience that adapts and evolves with your unique style and opens up a world of vocal possibilities. And I agree with that full on. We've got five blendable and creative vocal modules. BioVox, this allows us to adjust just human vocal characteristics like nasality, vocal shapes, and formants. There's a vocoder where you could dial in your favorite classic vocoding sounds or something new, modern, and fresh. Next up is CompuVox. CompuVox gives you a range of glitchy and computerized sounds perfect for space age hooks or crushed digital vocals. We've got a talk box unit, allowing us to get that unmistakable sound of a talk box without setting up any hardware. Finally, we've got a polyvox. Create beautiful and rich harmonies with polyvox, instantly adding body to your vocals with realistic doubles. You can either go through presets for each of these modules or go into the advanced options and dial it in specific to your needs. At the bottom, we've got seven stomp box style effects. We've got distortion, filtering, shred, transform, the new chorus module, delay, and ring mod. Now in Vocal Synth 2, these effects units are fully customizable, allowing you to move them and put them in any order you'd like. Now that we have an idea what's going on with this guy, let's get in there and see if we can make some cool sounds. All right, guys, here's a track that I made to showcase some of the features that I love about Vocal Synth 2. As you can see, I have a stack of vocals and we're gonna talk about how I use Vocal Synth 2 on these guys. And I have a vocal lead here. So we'll listen just from the verse through the drop here. I won't make you listen to the whole thing, but listen to the vocals and then listen to the drop. And then we're gonna go ahead into discussing how I use Vocal Synth to get these sounds. All right, let's check this out. So we're using three instances of vocal synth to get these sounds, two on the vocals and one on the lead. So let's go into the vocals first. Now this song is in F minor. So the first thing I wanna call your attention to, I'm using stems from a Black Octopus pack and these were originally in A sharp minor and I wanted to do the song in F minor. So what I did was I went ahead and retuned the lead vocal and what I wanted to do was make this sound a little more like it was in the song, okay? So I copied the lead vocal track down here and I applied a vocal synth to it. And what I did was I went into MIDI mode. Up here, you've got three different modes you can get into. You've got auto mode, 
MIDI mode, and side chaining mode. Now auto mode is just regular auto mode, just as the audio runs through it, you turn knobs and it's like a regular plugin. But MIDI mode and side chain mode offer a little more functionality. And we're gonna talk about MIDI mode right now. So right here, it gives you some instructions on how to set it up. I'm gonna show you as well, but if you get confused later, you can go ahead and read this. So in MIDI mode, you can control the notes and harmonies Vocal Synth 2 generates with a MIDI keyboard or just writing in the MIDI. So let's take a look at how I use this. All right, first of all, we have to set it up. So what I did was I went over to the channel that I wanted to use it on. So right here, I want to draw in these notes, okay? Just to be clear, notice that I did not change the transposition of this one, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redesign how it sounds with these notes here, okay? And this matches my 808 line and the chord progression of the song. So what we have to do is open up a new MIDI channel or blank MIDI channel. There's nothing on this at all. I added a blank MIDI clip and I drew in the notes that I wanted, which as I said before, follows my 808 and the chord progression of the song. And I went over here and routed this channel out to the channel that had the vocal synth on it. In this case, lead VS for vocal synth. Okay. And then this automatically connects to your vocal synth here. Let's take a listen to the lead by itself. I'll go ahead and disengage vocal synth here. Might as well disengage. Well, I'll just leave the filter on. It doesn't matter. And we'll take a listen to what it sounds like without vocal synth. Strange things start happening that I lose sense, but they keep unraveling. All right, now let's go ahead and engage vocal synth and see the difference. 3 a.m. Strange things start happening that I lose sense, but they keep unraveling my head. So now it's following the chord progression of my song and I didn't have to repitch it at all. In fact, if I play it with the lead that I did repitch, you'll hear how this adds quite an interesting texture to it. 3 a.m. Strange things start happening at I lose sense, but they keep unraveling my head. And I'll play it with the whole song now so you could hear how it really helps these vocals blend in. In fact, I'll turn off this other one that we haven't talked about yet. Alright guys, that's the first way I used MIDI mode to make these vocals blend a little bit better. Let's now jump into the drop and I'll show you how I used MIDI mode to make that lead. But just before we get going, I'd like to invite you to join the community by hitting the subscribe and activate notifications. That way you won't miss a beat and you'll get the heads up on all the things as soon as we post them. All right, let's talk about how we got that vocal lead in the drop. So I don't think we need to listen to this again since we just heard it, but what I'm gonna do is talk about what I did. So over here, this is a print or a freeze of these two tracks. So I'm gonna turn this off and let's go ahead and listen to what this vocal loop sounded like before we added any processing at all. Okay, here we go. Super. 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 So basically just some silly one shots that I used to create this loop. Now let's listen to what it sounds like with this clip on. What I did was I used MIDI mode in the exact same way I used it to create the vocal effect earlier. Over here, routed it to the vocal loop. Okay, as we did before. And I went in and wrote in this MIDI. Now, the one thing I will call your attention to is notice that there are a lot of overlapping notes. So I did that so I could take advantage of the glide mode here. So make sure you're on mono so the synth knows to glide to the next note when the notes are overlapped. And this is how long the glide will take. Let's take a look at how we're getting this. So I'm using a BioVox, a vocoder, CompuVox, and I went down here and added a little bit of distortion and a little bit of chorus. I engaged mono mode. I've got the glide here set to a little less than halfway, okay? And I also made it a bit wider. So basically to get this sound, I kind of tooled through a couple of presets. And when I found something that was close, I went ahead and adjusted the presets here. And I also went into a lot of these guys and added a filter so they would start sitting a little bit better together. I also adjusted the panning on the CompuVox and the panning on the BioVox so it would create a nice stereo image for me. 
Now that you know what I'm doing, let's mess around with some of these settings. I'm gonna go ahead and use the visualizer to adjust some of these volumes. So as I pull this up, you'll notice the volume goes up and down for each of these units. Let's check this out. It's just that easy to make a really cool sounding vocal lead inside of Vocal Synth 2. Let's go ahead and check out that final thing I want to show you, sidechain mode. So we're back over here with the vocals, and I thought I would take advantage of sidechain mode to tie these guys into the song even more. So up here, I have a pad that I created, and it sounds like this. And as you might be able to tell, they are exactly following this MIDI here. So what I wanted to do was tie this song into that chord progression even more. So I used sidechain mode. I went down here to this backing vocal track. Okay, let's solo that. I did pitch that into the right key. And let's go ahead and go into vocal synth 2 here. So first off, we'll just listen to it real quick without vocal synth 2. 3 a.m. strange things start happening. Just a backing track from the lead track that we're used to by now. So we're gonna go into here and pick sidechain mode. In sidechain mode, you could drive your favorite synth, guitar, or any other sound source through the Vocal Synth 2 modules, enabling you to turn your favorite audio source into a vocal effect. This tells you how to set it up, but I'm gonna show you as well. With the new update of Ableton, you'll notice that they have this new feature over here, which makes sidechaining these modules so much easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on Vocal Synth 2 and I'm going to sidechain it from the pad because that's the effect that I want to add to my vocals. And that's all you have to do. So now let's check out what this sounds like. That's pretty amazing, right? I went ahead and soloed the pad for you so you could hear that it is actually the pad that we're imprinting basically onto the vocals. So this is a really great way to add more texture and more continuity between your vocals and your track. Let me play the vocal track for you again and you'll be able to hear all three layers. The lead, the one that we laid in, that we drew in the notes, and now our sidechain layer. 3 a.m. strange things start happening I tie loose sense, but they keep unraveling I hear those words and I swear you call my name I love you just the same Or maybe I'm unraveling All right, guys, that about wraps it up for what I wanted to talk about with Vocal Synth 2. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Please let me know in the comments if there's any questions or concerns or anything specific that you wanted to know about Vocal Synth 2. If you guys found this interesting and you were interested in picking it up, jump over to the Warp Academy website where we got it there and more information on it. All right, guys, until next time, see ya.